Pedro from EMP Reacts. I'm here today with Fred of Mass Worship to talk about Coral Tombs out February 4th on Century Media. How's it going? Yeah, good, good. How are you? I'm doing great. Are you guys excited to see this album just start to take shape around the corner and fans finally going to be able to listen to it? Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, we've been waiting for a very long time. We started writing all of this stuff, I think, two, almost two and a half years ago, some of the songs. So it's been a while and we've been waiting for the, for the right opportunity to get it out. And now finally we're, you know, committing to, to the right opportunity as best we can, because, you know, everything's been locked up. We can't really book any tours. Uh, but we're we're keeping our fingers crossed. Uh, hopefully, it's going to be a good release now. So, so let me ask you this: Is this album defined by its darkness, or does the darkness of the record hide the true soul of what this album is all about? I think it's defined more by the darkness. I mean, in a sense, uh, I've been talking to to a lot of people about this, and it's it's kind of like indistinguishable from from me in a way. Like what I write is just this this is what you get essentially like it's not tampered with in a way it's like just just an extension of my mind this is how i see the world these are my emotions and uh, and that just happens to be a pretty dark outlook <laughs> and that's it and, and that's what comes across how, how is that creative uh, process for you putting an album like this together yeah it's it's hard i mean it's it's really is hard uh, it it demands a lot of you know attention on a, on a lot of different levels um, Usually it's me writing all of the stuff uh, and recording it as well, but I'm doing it uh, in communication with the other guys in the band. We're kind of bouncing ideas and scrapping some ideas. And, you know, it takes a lot of back and forth in communication about finding what's right for this album. Uh, but in terms of, uh, of the actual writing, it's a lot of like heavy, you know, you're, you're pouring out your soul essentially. And it, that demands a lot of energy and, you know, it's, it's, yeah, it's a hell of a job to, to write and record record. Like it takes a lot of time and energy always. Do you feel a little bit overwhelmed at the end of the process, considering the darkness that the album has and, and how deep inside you go in order to bring that darkness out? Yeah, definitely. Like, I think every time I finish up a record, regardless of what band it is, uh, I, I don't want to do it again, <laughs> but then, you know, a, a week or two after you back at it again and you start writing stuff it's like impossible to get out of it it's such an yeah, it's such a weird weird thing somehow you, you need a vacation after each record yeah yeah but at like two weeks then i'm back to it but that's it <laughs> do, do you go in to to the album specifically with portal tunes did you come into the album with a little bit of of a challenge that you want to put yourself through or, or do things happen a little bit more organic as the record starts to take shape uh like when it comes to the uh, the actual tonality and the themes of the record it's very organic and it's very intuitive it's it's kind of connected to you know it's not like we think up a, a theme that we're going to play and then you know that's it it's more like it's just an outpouring of ideas essentially so so for that side of it it's uh it's fairly organic and it's and it's not so much planned if that makes sense oh what was the other question no, I wanted to see if, if, if not by not being planned and being organic, if you still look forward to creating challenges for yourself in the process of making the, uh, the record. Oh, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Like one of those challenges is like we, we all collectively decided that we wanted to be more melodic, more progressive. Like we want to push the boundaries when it comes to the actual performance of parts. So that's that's like the real challenge uh, is to, you know, enhance everything. It's like you you have a few things you can you know tweak up a bit and we there's there's certain aspects of it that we want to you know up, up a bit on and if we, oh sorry the progressive part of it and the melodic part of it is definitely two of those uh big things that we really worked on on this album and i think we succeeded with that do you do you define this album in terms of how it's constructed the reason i want to ask you this question is because when i was listening to the record Normally, when you find an album, the album has a journey or, or, or at least at the very least, it has a path that, you know, you're starting here and it's going to finish over there. When I was listening to this record, I felt like the path was downwards. It was like a downward spiral with every step that I'm taking on this record. I'm getting deeper and deeper into this black hole and and the sun is further and further away from me. So uh, how would you define the path or, or the journey, if you will, on, on the album? No, I, I think that's 100% correct. And, and I think it's also like, 
from the first record to the second record that we release now, there's also kind of like a downward <laughs> spiral in terms of everything. And, and I think it's just that the more time you spend on a dedicated project, the deeper you go. And I kind of expect people to, you know, people that like us uh, and that have listened to the previous stuff, they are going to follow with me down that spiral. And I expect that to happen. And I mean, for, for other people, new listeners or whatever it may be, uh, it might be a bit overwhelming at certain points uh, if, you, if you go in, you know, too late in the process, so to speak. But that's always kind of a balance. You need to balance it out. You know, we, wanna, we want it to be listenable and attractive for the first time listener, but we still want it to be deep enough. And there's enough layers of complexity uh, for, for the returning listener as well, so that you can listen to a record for, for you know, a couple of years and still kind of, oh, shit, I didn't think about that aspect of it. And same thing with lyrical themes and the, the emotional quality of the songs that you kind of, holy shit, I didn't think about this, this aspect of it. This makes me feel this way. And that's kind of how we want to, how we want to produce stuff. Is there a, a balance that it's hard to, to navigate? Like having that journey that goes downwards, but at the same time, allowing the listeners to kind of enjoy the process of going down that spiral? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. And I think at certain times you kind of need to, you know, reach up a bit. I think we have a couple of those moments on the record now. There's a couple of songs later in the record that kind of, you know, okay, let's go back to surface level a bit. <laughs> and then <laughs> we can, you know, deep, deep dive again. And I, but yeah, it is, it is a challenge. It's a balance, but it's also kind of like, you know, this is how we're going to do it deal with it and that's that's kind of it like we we just expect it to work I, I think one of those songs is unholy mass it has a little bit yeah. of a froggy even pink floyd vibe to, to the way it's put together and it works really well because at least i mean it starts with some brightness but then it ends in darkness all over again uh that song to me kind of felt a little bit outside the box when you look at the entire record uh what drove you to go down that direction that Pink Floyd vibe style on a mass worship. Yeah, I, again, I think it's like something that we decided on collectively. We want it, we want this band to become more and more progressive. And that, that's something that we, I mean, right now we're already working on new songs, which is not going to be released for another year or two, but it's it's still this idea. Like you have the down, downward spiral. At the same time, we also want to evolve all of the other branches as well. We want to be more melodic. We want it to be more progressive. And this this is one of those, introductory introductory moments of what may come in the future in a way um just just to give a hint of you know the the direction we want to move in and i think on holy mass is a perfect example of both going back to the surface level a bit bring some light back into the darkness but also an introduction to a bit of a more progressive side of mass worship do you worry about the balance of the record and, and the consistency that the album has even though you introduced some of these new elements like unholy mass is a perfect example of that overall the experience that a listener gets at the end of the album it, it's so overwhelming dark that those moments of light may not be enough to break that darkness is that something that you worry about no i, th I think it's deliberate in a way this is a dark band and uh, like the themes that were you know attacking and uh, and everything we're doing with this band is based around darkness so uh i think it's just you know if you want light light and you know happy music then maybe this is not yeah maybe look somewhere else we're not going to give you that <laughs> <laughs> what element in the sound of this album can you like uh, mark it down as as a defining element of what the band is all about is there something that stands out for you i think it is that that darkness that's, and, and that's been like a reoccurring theme uh, all throughout everything we do, essentially. It's that darkness and the feeling of like being overrun by a tank in a way. Like that, that's always like a over good indicator. Of, yeah, <laughs> over and over. Yeah, yeah. And, it, I, and I mean, it is overwhelming for sure, but that's kind of a reoccurring theme. When we pick songs collectively in the band, that's always something that we look for. Oh shit, okay. This one makes me feel like, you know, I'm, I've been overrun by a couple of tanks and uh, let's, let's go with that one. <laughs> and so it's that combination of, of darkness and just uh, relentless brutality in a way. Um, but I think we have a twist to it too, in, in, in different ways. Uh, that is a bit uh, not so generic from, from what other bands might do it. We approach things a bit differently. 
One of the elements that I love on this record was the drum sound. I, I felt like the drums had a, a very distinct impact in the overall texture and in, in the atmosphere and the way the songs helped create some shape around them. So you have this darkness, but now this darkness kind of sits inside of this box that's kind of created by the drums. At least they start with the drums. Was that the game plan for you guys, having the drums as the foundation that allows you then to put all the different building blocks on top? Yeah, always. I mean, I'm a drummer uh, by nature, so so that's always the center place. I think we base a lot of our stuff on on rhythms as well. Uh, but you know, I I always approach because it's also me mixing, producing it, and everything. And I always try to approach an album a lot like you know, handcrafting a house in a way. You want it to be you know a bit weird. You want to keep the the you know oddness of it. Like some of the quirks should be left intact in a way uh, so it doesn't feel so much like a producting uh, production line product you know another another product that you just buy and you know mcdonald's music mcdonald's production like we we don't need more of that we need unique spaces and and i think music for me and especially mass worship for me is about world creation in a way like you write music and lyrics that brings in the listener into another dimension of reality in a way and you know the choice of drum sound is definitely one of those things. It needs to be unique. It needs to you know bring a new flavor to to the already so uh, you know uh, packed metal scene the way it is. Like we need we want to bring a new flavor into that. Yeah, and I felt like you guys really deliver on that front because the the drum sound stands out. It's not like a drum sound that I've heard in other bands or other records. It, it fits. The overall design of the album perfectly and, and enhances the overall experience that the album has so it was something that normally when you listen to the record you gravitate towards the vocals or the guitars and and the drums and bass tend to become a little bit forgotten but on, on this album those two elements played in my opinion at least a very important role on how you're going to appreciate the the overall experience that the album offers so it was outstanding as far as i'm concerned yeah, definitely. Yeah, thank you so much. And and I mean, that's that's definitely one of those things that can scare people away. You know, it's like it sounds different. It doesn't sound like this what I'm used to. And but I, I promise you, if you listen to it a couple of times, you're going to get into it and then you're going to get sucked into the world that is mass worship as well, which I think is pretty cool. Like there's there's nothing else that sounds like this. I know it because it's handcrafted. So I, I really like that idea of it. Yeah, yeah, I, I'm, I'm the same. And, and you mentioned the lyrics a few times. I have to ask you. Uh, at what point of the process, the creative process, do the lyrics come into the picture? And, and how much do they help shape the sound that the tracks have? They come in, I mean, the original arrangement for stuff comes in very fast. But the actual lyrics of it, that's like the very end thing that we do. Uh, because it takes a lot of time for me to, you know, I know exactly how I want the, the vocals to be. We're all like crust punk, D-beat fans. We want it to be you know, very in your face and the kind of short, uh, short, short words and, you know, a lot of attack into it. Yeah. And uh, so it takes a lot of time for me to find the right words, because then at the same time, as you want the words to fit to the vocal arrangement, you also want it to enhance this world creation. Again, like we're trying to build a world that is mass worship and we want those words to, you know, capture the emotion of this song. But that usually happens pretty late, uh, finding the actual right words. And that, you know, it's a lot of twisting and turning, tweaking, even though it's not many words, it, it still takes shit loads of time to find the right ones, you know? Because it, it, it's going to have a, a definite impact, at least in the atmosphere of the tracks. I mean, if it doesn't make sense, it's, it's going to throw everything off, off center as, as far as the listener is concerned. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Was there a track on this album that gave you, and I know you don't have any gray hair unlike me, but was there a song on this album that gave you some gray hairs? Uh, let's see. I think uh, Unholy Mass was one of those songs. Like we really, it took us a while to, to really figure out what direction we, we wanted to go. Because I mean, that song, when you hear the, the hard part in the end, the like climax of the song, that, that could have continued, you know, and, and created a whole new, a branch of that song but we decided to to cut it short and and not go fully into the same you know again a tank running over you 
But that was definitely one of those songs that we tweaked for a very long time, tried shit, loads of different solos, me and the guitar player, both of us uh, tried a different tried different melodies, different solos on top of it. So that, that was a hard one to, to really nail. And we wanted that one to be, you know, as good as possible because it's such an introduction to where we want to want this band to lead later on. What part of that song did you guys start it off with? Did you start more with the proggy side and then work towards the heavier side or you had the heavier side and you try to figure out what proggy elements can we add to the beginning of this? Now, a lot of the songs actually, and, and that one in particular starts with the, the clean part. And uh, so that, that was the first thing we started with that song and we built it from there kind of, you know, okay, where, where does this clean part lead us? Where, where does the, you know, what, what kind of imagery do you get in your head? Uh, but that's also true for a lot of the other songs, uh, even like the, the title track, which is like very metal, a very, you know, uh, in your face. Even that song started out with the clean part. I usually like to start with that because it gives you like a theme and it, it's much easier to build up something emotionally using melodies and uh, themes in that way than to start with a riff, to me at least. Mm -hmm. Uh, this album, you said that you had to go deep inside to bring that darkness out. So when you're going through that process, is there something that you learned about yourself during the making of this record that perhaps wasn't very clear to you at the start? Yeah, there's there's definitely some parts of it. I mean, we're we're kind of dealing with human search for meaningless and a meaningless existence. That's that's kind of like the core concept of everything that we've been talking about, and. I mean, one thing that I really like at the end of it came out with was this profound feeling of, you know, there's there's actually some some strength to be found in something that is very meaningless. Like it can be very comforting thinking about the fact that, you know, my daily struggles that I might face today, they don't really mean shit at the end of the day. You know, when you when you zoom out far enough, you know, 200 years, 300 years, from, no one's going to care about me. <laughs> you know, and there's some there's some, you know, real strength in in uh, in coming to that conclusion, both from an individual side, but also as a society. There's a lot of things we face as a society uh, today that might not mean anything in, you know, 300 years, one million years from now. And I kind of like those perspectives. It, it really strengthens, strengthens your mind and it makes you focus on the right things. Wow, that's that's some really deep philosophical stuff. I, I <laughs> I'm, I'm totally done with that because I, I see the world a little bit from that perspective as well. I think sometimes we focus too much on the road ahead without really taking the time to realize that the moment we're in doesn't really have necessarily the impact that we hope for down the line. Like, who, who's going to know me in, in 30 years? You know what I mean? Like, the, the only way perhaps yeah. you can impact is by impacting those around you and then obviously creates a little bit more of a, a wave of, of uh, yeah exactly computer. exactly yeah and it makes you prioritize things differently it's uh you know they yeah that was definitely one of those things that i came to you know a, a profound conclusion at the end of this record i have one more question for you and, and that is for those that have never heard the band before but decide to pick up this album and press play what do you hope they walk away with after listening to portal tunes I hope they get a get a like quick look into the world uh, that is mass worship. I hope they get a you know that I can shift their their perspective, so to speak, and and they can get you know see the world through my eyes for a brief moment. I think that's the that's the intention with everything we do, is to uh, you know help help give people another perspective of things, and uh, in whatever way we can do that, we we want to try to do that. Well, Fred, thank you very much for your time today. I mean, this was an absolute pleasure to talk to you. Uh, best of luck with the release on February 4th. Portal Tomb Century Media coming out soon. Mass Worship, thank you very much. Thank you so much, man. I appreciate it. Take care.